Hello everyone, FPL Wrapped here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be going through my team selection ahead of game week 14. We have our first midweek deadline, so we need to turn this around really, really quickly, get the content out to you guys and start solving our dilemmas, making our transfers and sorting our captaincy as soon as possible. If you are enjoying the content here on this channel, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. I think it's a little bit optimistic, but we're going to try and get there before the turn of the new year. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed and you enjoy the video you're watching Day, please do consider subscribing it goes a really long way free for you guys but it supports me so very much without further ado let's jump into today's video So guys, that time of the video, just to give a massive shout out to the legends over at OneFootball for sponsoring the videos on this channel for the foreseeable future. Very, very useful for the midweek games and when there are a lot of games coming thick and fast, you can find out not only when the fixtures are, you can find out home and away form, which I find incredibly useful. You've got statistics there. You've also got injury updates, transfer updates when we get to the January transfer window different stats for different players, yellow cards, which was something that we mentioned in the previous video. And a couple of players are now on four yellow cards, such as Cancelo and Bruno Fernandes. So you can find out all of that information by heading over to the OneFootball app. The best way to do that to support the channel and also get the app is either by scanning the QR code in the top left corner of the screen or by clicking the link in the description. That way you're still getting the best free app on the market for football, but you're also supporting the channel as well. If you do download OneFootball, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. So guys, I'm indeed recording this on Sunday night, straight after the Manchester United-Chelsea game, jumping on. So I suppose as much as a team selection video, this is also a sort of a knee-jerk reaction to the game week. Just my initial thoughts. Because of the Tuesday deadline, we literally only have Monday. And I don't want to put the video out on Tuesday because it's only going to get like a couple of hours of you guys being able to see it. So I want to get my video out straight away on Monday morning slash Monday afternoon. So I've got to jump on and record straight after. So I haven't done the amount of research I normally would. That being said, I'm pretty certain on one of my moves. And I'm also certain on sort of the direction that I want to go going forward. So you know me. I'm always doing research. I'm always thinking about it. So despite having not done explicit research, I'm still fine to record this video. How did Game Week 13 go? absolute disaster if you follow me on social media i've been making light of it because you know me like i'm a fairly stable guy with response to different things going on in fpl and i've been using the psychological techniques that i've learned across the years to try and respond to poor game weeks and listen my rank is still really really good i'm still really happy with it and there are certain things that are just beyond our control and the burnley tottenham game being called off due to a, a significant amount of snow was not something that I expected to happen. There was all these rumors floating around that the Liverpool game might be called off. Some people avoided Jota for that reason. For then Jota to score a brace and the Tottenham game to call off, it was it was pretty laughable. And this is what I've said in my past videos. I think it was my game week 10 selection video. I'll try and remember to link it above when I talked about the mental health associated with FPL and how to respond positively to a bad game week. You just need to realize these things are out of our control. I've put out a perfectly good team here. And yes, you can say triple Spurs wasn't the best idea, but triple Spurs against Burnley, you're probably expecting an attacking return of some kind from both Kane and Son, potentially just one. Emerson clean sheet is fairly likely as well. You're probably looking realistically at between 12 and 15 points from the three of them. It could have been 25, 30 points if the three of them had done specifically well. So when I put out this team, it looks pretty good. A lot of my players returned and this could have been a humongous green arrow. For the game to be called off during due to snow, it's laughable. And to be, I genuinely, it hasn't really affected me because it's just one of those things. I can't control that. That is complete luck. That is variance. There is nothing I can do about that. And you just have to move on swiftly and think, oh, I've done the best I can here. There was no way I was going to be able to call that happening and it is quite annoying because the Leicester game and the Man City game the conditions were just as bad as the Burnley game the only reason that they weren't called off is at the start of the game the snow wasn't too bad but by the end the conditions were just as bad so it's just one of those things if it was a 4 30 kickoff I reckon it would have gone ahead and I reckon they would have managed to clear the slow a little bit quicker but it's done now there's no point ruminating there's no point overthinking it and thinking what could have been because it could have been amazing but it could have also been one pointers for each of them and I might not have been much better off so we're never going to know that I've still got triple spurs. I'm perfectly happy with my team moving forward. There are a few things I want to change, but with respect to how the rest of the team performed, Ramsdale and Saka got the game week off to a cracking start with 15 points between them. Saka going off injured was a little bit annoying because I felt like he still could have got something out of that game. But either way, a clean sheet from Ramsdale and a goal from Saka is absolutely brilliant. They were both on bonus points. They were on eight and nine points and then they got their bonus point removed, which is a little bit annoying. But overall... I was like, Do you know, what? I'm on something here. I think my live rank was about 17K, but then it all went downhill from there. Trent and Salah both get an attack in return, showing that they are absolutely, I don't like using the word, but they are absolutely essential really in our teams at the moment. Trent and Salah, I think are probably the two best players to own in FPL at the moment. 
James and Cancelo, I'm not going to complain. The amount of points that they've got me recently is remarkable. So for them to get one point, it's from both of them. It's one of those things. They're not going to get 12 to 15 points every single game week. Mbomo or in Burma, I should say, is a, is a real issue in my team. I'd love to remove him. The issue is that there aren't many players around that price that I actually like. You have to go up all the way to like 6.1 million to a Corne or to a Gallagher, and then even higher to like a Gundogan, Jota, Bernardo Silva. So my issue is his price. And despite wanting to remove him, I need to find money to remove him. And then I think, is the money best spent elsewhere, which we'll discuss in the next section. Tony getting another goal is fantastic. Tony's non-penalty expected goals, so not including his pen, was zero. So he didn't, he didn't accumulate any XG in that game outside the penalty. So despite getting a nine-pointer, I'm still not convinced that Tony's a fantastic hold moving forward. So oh, and the bench, I should say, the transfer that I made was Armstrong to Gelhart. I was going to do Armstrong to King or Armstrong to Dennis. Of course, I say that. If you follow me on Twitter, I genuinely was going to make that move. The reason I didn't is because I wanted to have the money in the bank to go from Saka to Jota this week. So I downgraded all the way to Gelhart. I probably should have kept a bit of money on the bench, which we'll discuss in the next section. But that meant that for Emerson's son and Kane, all three of them missing out, I got one point from Norman coming off the bench, which is typical. Every week, I've had about 15, 20 points on my bench. And the one week I actually finally need my bench, I don't get anything. So it's a laughable week. Everything that went wrong really could have. I know I got some good points from Ramsdale, Saka and Tony. It could have been a lot better. All of that being said, it was 50 points, which only gave me, I say only, about a 12 or 13k red arrow, which is quite a lot on my rank. It was about a 35%, I think, ish red arrow. So it's not great, but I'm still in the top 50k. The team still looks all right going forward. I'm perfectly comfortable. I've got two free transfers and 1.5 million in the bank. Now's the time when you don't let your emotion rule you. You don't make knee-jerk transfers. You don't start taking minus eights and minus 12s because you're angry with the way your team's gone. You continue to make those sound logical decisions. At some point, the variance will swing back in my favor. At some point, what happened this week will happen to someone else and I'll get the luck of getting those braces or whatever it is. So I'm perfectly happy, very calm. Let's move on to the team selection ahead of game week 14. So I actually have two free transfers and 1.5 million in the bank. But the reason that it currently says one transfer and 0.1 is I'm almost certain on one of my transfers. And therefore, I'm just going to show you that transfer in my team. And it's about then what do I do with the second free transfer and do I take a hit, which will be the discussion for today's video. With respect to the defense and the keeper, as I've said before, you're not going to have the perfect keeper each week. And therefore, I'm not too fussed about having Ramsdale against Manchester United. In fact, having watched us against Chelsea today, I wouldn't put it past Arsenal keeping a clean sheet there. And if Ramsdale does keep a clean sheet against Manchester United, there'll probably be quite a few saves there as well. So not too fast there. Hopefully you can get between three and five points. And if he gets more than that, it's a bonus. The defense is actually looking really, really strong this week. No fixtures there, which I'm particularly worried about. The only thing that I am slightly worried about is the fact that there are, they are midweek fixtures. So I think Emerson will play regardless because he didn't play the Burnley game and therefore he should be really fit even though there are a lot of games coming up and Trent starts pretty much every game for Liverpool anyway. So Trent and Emerson I'm not too worried about. James and Cancelo I am slightly because they've played so many games recently not only in the Premier League but also in the Champions League and I just... I, I see midweek fixtures specifically against teams that aren't that great in Watford and Villa, although Villa have looked better under Gerrard. I see these as the times to rest these players. So I wouldn't be shocked to see one of James and Cancelo rested, hopefully not both, because my bench at the moment isn't in a state to deal with that. And obviously James will then come on for the one pointer anyway, probably, so I won't get to see my bench. So there's not really a lot I can do about that. I'm not going to take either of them out. It's just one of those things that maybe it means that I should be spending my free transfers on my defence my other free chance for my defense as opposed to using it elsewhere or potentially using it on upgrading one of Gail Hart or Norman. So there are some things to think about, but I'm perfectly happy with the defense moving forward. They've got great fixtures. Livermento on the bench. I did discuss this on Twitter. I do think now that if you've got free transfers and nothing else to do in your team, I would look at moving off of Livermento. Over the next 10 weeks, I don't see many clean sheets for Southampton. And yes, he's great value and you might have a little bit of money tied up in him. But if your selling value is around 4.4 million, even 4.5, you brought him in recently. I think there are much better options at that price. I like Lamptey. I like the Mark Gehi. I forgot how you pronounce his name. The, the Crystal Palace center back that I've been talking about for a few weeks now. Even Mitchell. There are teams with better underlying data with defenses better fixtures and some players with better potential upside from an attacking perspective such as Lamptey so I think there are other options there even Johnson if you fancy him to keep his place ahead of so foul so I would potentially look there I just think he's definitely going to start the fixtures aren't terrible and he's got decent underlying data so it might be better that I use my free transfer elsewhere so that is the defense let's move on to the midfield so we're going to actually start with my proposed transfer I haven't actually made the transfer but I'm 
99.9% sure I'm going to make it. The only reason I wouldn't is if he gets injured or one of my other players, main players, gets injured and I have to start thinking about other transfers. And that is Saka to Jota. Anno I suppose not annoyingly, but also slightly annoyingly. I could have done it ahead of game week 13, but I just didn't want to take Saka out before Newcastle because I thought he could have done something. He scored. However, Jota also got obviously scored the brace and he got bonus points and obviously he's risen in price 0 0.1 million so it would have been worth doing Saka to Jota but I, I also back the decision that I made to not make it this week because I didn't know what might happen if for example Son, Salah and Trent all got injured I might not have wanted to bring Jota in so I'm perfectly happy with the fact that I delayed it a week although it would have probably been the optimal decision to bring him in ahead of game week 13 but I'm going to make that move now I'm going to do Saka to Jota as I said that leaves me with 0 0.1 million in the bank and one free transfer so it's about what I use that extra free transfer on I just want Jota long term I think he'll be now while Firmino, Firmino isn't in the team even if Firmino comes back earlier than thought he still plays a lot of minutes then you've got AFCON coming up I just think the Liverpool are too good. Jota's too good with his underlying data. He'll get so many opportunities to score. He's still so cheap at 7.7 .7 million. I want him in my team. Salah obviously will stay in my team until AFCON, even potentially through AFCON if I don't see anyone else that I want to replace him with, but definitely up until AFCON. He's currently got my captain's armband. I genuinely, if someone told me Trent, um, James is definitely starting, if I could get confirmation, I would captain James this week. I'm obviously not going to have a captaincy video. I just think that's such a plum fixture. Even with how good Watford have been from an attacking perspective recently, I just see that as potential attacking uh, upside there with goals because Watford haven't been that great from a defensive perspective. And also obviously a great chance for clean sheet. And I don't think the Salah against Everton is that much better than James. So I think I would take the punt on James if I could confirm James is starting. But like I said, I've just got that worry. So I think because it's a midweek game, because I've got other issues in my team, I might just stick the armband on Salah as a safe captaincy bet, likely to get some sort of attacking return and focus on trying to climb my way up the ranks in other ways and other areas. So at the moment, Salah's got the armband. If you're feeling really, really brave and you've got Alonso, I do think that Alonso is more likely. He did... He did come off early. If he didn't come off early with an injury because people are saying he might have picked up a knock. If Alonso is fit, I do quite like Alonso for the armband as well. The other two midfielders I've got in my team are Son and Mbermo. Of course, I've had them for a couple of weeks now. I don't really want either of them particularly. I'm not going to take Son out before Brentford and Norwich because Brentford just haven't looked that great recently. And Norwich is, despite Norwich defending pretty well recently, actually, I think they've only conceded like four goals in seven games or something ridiculous like that. I do still want Son for those two fixtures. And the only person I would want to take Son out for is probably Jota. So I don't really feel the need to do that when I can do Jota in for Saka instead. So I'll probably keep Son. And Bermo is, is the biggest, not issue in my team, but if I could say one player that I could take out in my team, it would be him. I just don't want him anymore. I really don't want him in my team. The underlying data isn't even as impressive as it once was. He looked knackered after about 45, 50 minutes of that game today. I just don't want him on my team. He's not delivering anymore. But the issue, again, is price. And as I said, I've got 0 0.1 million in the bank. There's no one at that price that I'd want above him, especially not worth taking using a transfer on it particularly. If I could have anyone in that position, I really like the look of Ilkay Gundogan. His, his underlying stats that he's putting up are really impressive. His XG is significantly better than Foden and Bernardo Silva. So I really do like the look of Gundogan. I think he'll play a lot of minutes whilst Grealish and um, Foden and KDB are all suffering with potential knocks. Even once they're back, I do still think he'll play a lot of minutes over the Christmas period. So if I could get, if I could get Gundogan in for Burma, I would. It's just where do I find that? What is it, like 1.7 million that I'd need? I, I could potentially downgrade like Tony or a Cancelo, but it just doesn't seem optimal for my team. Again, I could downgrade Son to Gundogan and then Mbom up to like a Bernardo Silva. I'm just not sure that I want to do that now. I think that's something that I could do in a couple of weeks when City's fixtures turn for the better and Spurs' fixtures turn for the worse. And I've currently got Norman, obviously, on the bench. It's annoyingly, Norman went off with a pelvic injury, and I don't know if he's going to be fit. I might. It's a really boring transfer, but I could potentially just do Norman to Gilmore. In that way, Gilmore is showing a more attacking threat at the moment under Dean Smith, and also I just make sure that I've got another substitute. And as I said, because Cancelo and James, I think, could be rested, I do just want to improve that bench, because Gelhart is a sub. He was just brought in just as a £4.5 million forward. And Norman might be injured. I've then only got Liveramento to cover the entire team. We saw we saw last week in game week 13 that you might need your entire bench. So Norman to Gilmore would save me 0 0.1 million. And it also means that I'm confirmed that I've got a playing bench. So I'll keep an eye on Dean Smith's press conference. If Norman looks like he's out, that might just be the boring, sensible decision to make there. I'm not displeased with the midfield, especially the fact that I've got Salah, Son and Jota now. And Bermo is the one that's staring me in the face, but I just don't want anyone outside Gundogan. So for the time being... I guess he might stay in my team. We'll discuss a potential way that I could take in Burma as part of a minus four and bring in Alonso, which I do like the look of. It just leaves the bench very, very weak.
So guys, just finishing off with the attackers, we do have Kane and Tony playing against each other. And that does mean that we have five players in the Brentford Tottenham game, which just spells big fat red arrow to me because it's just such a difficult game to call. Obviously that, that game could be four all, could be goals from Son and Bomo, Kane and Tony, and it could be fine. It just, it worries me having five players in a game where you've got two teams that aren't playing well, playing against each other in a midweek game. That could potentially be like a nil-nil or a one-nil to Brentford, in which case I'm looking like that could be a real, real issue. I'm perfectly happy having the, the triple Spurs. That being said, I, I'm not attached to Emerson particularly. I wouldn't mind taking Emerson Royale out. I do want to keep Son and Kane for the next two just because I don't see many replacements. The only potential player that I would want desperately enough to take Son out is Jota, but I can get Jota in for Saka. And the only player that I would really want him for Kane is probably like an Antonio Watkins Wilson ish striker but none of them have either the short-term fixtures or the long-term fixtures so I think I want to wait a couple of weeks to make that move from Kane probably to downgrade to a mid-priced striker so I'm I think I'm happy enough keeping Son and Kane for the next two Tony and Burmo are both probably the two issues in my team that I don't really want either of them but again at their prices I don't see that many other options well you've got Ben Teke potentially coming in for Tony wouldn't be that bad the issue I've got with the two Brentford boys is after Tottenham, I think it's Leeds and Watford, or is it it's two teams like that? We'll discuss it in the next section, their two next fixtures. After Tottenham, they've got two nice fixtures on the bounce. I think it is Leeds and Watford. So if I bring in like a Gallagher for Mbomo or a Benteke for a Tony this week, the two weeks after, I'm going to wish I then had Tony and Mbomo back because the fixtures are really nice. And Brentford haven't been great from an attacking perspective, but they're not one of the worst teams in the league. They're sort of mid-table, lower mid-table. So... It's a really tricky one, and I don't really want these five players for this week, but I'm not desperate to take out any of them that much. If I could bring in any player in the week in, in the game this week alongside Jota, I really do want Ilkay Gundogan, but to get Gundogan in from Burmo, I would have to drop Tony to like a Davis, which would leave my bench as Norman, Gelhart, and Davis, which is just a tragic, tragic bench. I don't think I'd want to do that, and I'd be having to play Livermento against Leicester, and then if anyone misses out, the team's looking really weak. So I don't think I can get him in this week. What I think I'll have to do is son to Gundogan in a few weeks around game week 17, game week 18, which I don't mind doing. Then I could potentially go to a Sancho or Rashford if Manchester United are looking good under Rangnick. So yeah, not really sure at the moment. In the next section, we'll have a bit of a tinker and I'll show you some other options because I do like the look of getting Alonso in. I do like the look of getting a Crystal Palace defender in. I do like the look of Ben Teke still. So there are some other options to do. The one that I'm almost certain... I'm going to do is Saka to Jota. It leaves the team looking like this with one free transfer in the bank. So if you've got any ideas with what to do with that other free transfer, do let me know. I'm happy to take a minus four this week because I think it could be a week to just be a little bit aggressive attack and maybe restructure the team a little bit. So if you've got an idea of two transfers to sort out this team, do let me know. The potential sort of safe option, as I said, is to just do Norman to Gilmore. If I do Norman to Gilmore, I save as another 0.1, so I'd have 0.2 million next week because Gilmore's 4.4 million. And it would allow me to make sure that I've got Livermento and Gilmore on the bench if Norman is out. I'll keep an eye on Dean Smith's press conference, but at the moment, that's sort of the safe, obvious move, I think, is just to make sure that I've got a bench in case James and Cancelo do miss out. But let me know down below any creative ideas. I'm always more than happy to hear them. So guys, we're now just going to have a little look at what the team's going to look like over the coming fixtures heading into this busy Christmas schedule and look if there are any obvious weaknesses and if so, can I deal with them this week? Because like I said, I've still got a free transfer to use. I don't mind taking a minus four. It might be that rather than attacking this week and trying to get the best possible result from game week 14, I just look at where's the issues in my team going forward that might help to decide what to do this week. So the website that I'm using currently is fpl.team. It's completely free to use. I'm not an affiliate. I'm not sponsored by it just a free to use site. It's absolutely fantastic. It lets you plan ahead, see how your team looks for future weeks. And I like it because it looks like the FPL site, which obviously just helps you to focus your attention a little bit. So this is how the team looks. If I make the Saka to Jota move, looks pretty good. Don't, apart from the two Brentford players and the three Spurs players this week all playing against each other, I don't have a massive issue with that. And if I just had like Kane, Son and Emerson and Tony, I'd go out, oh, that's fine. But it's the fact that I've got Tony and Bomo and the three Spurs boys, it starts to get a little bit much, but Team looks all right for now. If Norman's fit, I'm pretty happy with the team. It might be that I just make that one transfer and then roll the free transfer again. I think that might be a little bit passive. And I think I'm getting to a stage now where I'm not sure what I want to do. So I just keep rolling this free transfer. And I feel like I'm just going to slowly start slipping down. So I think I need to be a little bit more, a little bit more proactive and aggressive with my transfers, which I did earlier on in the season around sort of game week five or six. And it started to work really well for me. I think sometimes you just got a little, get a little bit more aggressive with it. If I don't make another transfer, though, what I like to do is before I make the transfer, how does my team look for next week? So if we just skip ahead to game week 15, it looks good. Like it looks really good, right? 
I've got Brighton, Livermore against Brighton still on the bench. And I just keep the entire same starting 11. But it looks much better this week. The triple Spurs against Norwich looks good. And Bermo Tony against Leeds is really nice. The triple Liverpool against Wolves looks good. West Ham, James against West Ham, Cancelo against Watford look like really, really nice fixtures. If they are rested midweek, then they should be fine for there. Even if they're not, they should still have a few days to recover. I wouldn't expect to see James rested against West Ham. It might be a fixture that Cancelo's rested against Watford, but then Livermento comes in for him. So we're absolutely fine with that. So this is almost why I'm, I'm not desperate to take out Mbomo and Tony this week, just because they've got the Tottenham game, which isn't ideal, but then they've got Leeds. And if we skip again, it is Watford at home they've got. And if you then look at the same 11 once again, it's really fine. And this is why I'm struggling with my transfer this week. I suppose my, my key issue that I've got in my current team is that the bench is really weak. So it might be that I make a double transfer to try and upgrade my bench a little bit. But then who do I take out to sacrifice that? If I take out like an Imbermaro Tony to strengthen the bench, I'm just weakening my starting 11. What I would say is what I would probably do is I'll either make a transfer this week or I would make a transfer this week due to an injury or something cropping up. But I would try and roll a free transfer so that I've got two free transfers here. Because I think at this point, I'm not desperate to have triple spurs from this point onwards. They've got Brighton, Leicester, and then some tricky fixtures. So what I would probably do at this stage is at this stage, I would take out Son for Gundogan. That would give me like three million to play with. I would potentially downgrade Kane, potentially to someone like an Antonio. I don't know who have West Ham have this week. Burnley, perfect. So get like a Gundogan and Antonio in. I would then have around 8 million to play with here. So across the next week or so, I could take a minus four here and potentially up upgrade a Gell Hurt to, I'm not sure what Villa's fixture is for this week. So it's Liverpool, which is fine because I don't really need a starting 11. But I could upgrade Gell Hart then to a, a starting striker around 7 million. Or I could potentially go for like a Sancho in midfield for Norman. I'd have so much to play with that I could start to upgrade the bench then, I would still then have a little bit of money to play with. And at that point, I can then upgrade Norman once again. So across the next two weeks, game week 16, game week 17, I can slowly then just put a little bit of money back into my team so that it's strong heading into the really busy December and January period. So I suppose all of this is saying that even though I have a weak bench at the moment, I don't need to panic because I've got Son and Kane who I'm happy to sell in game week 16. So I really just need to get through game week 14 and game week 15 with a slightly weaker bench. All of that comes back to, I really don't know what to do with this second free transfer. The other thing I could do, if I just refresh this, go back to game week 14. I do quite want Alonso in my team. The issue is it would probably have to be for Emerson. If I just go back to putting Jota in for Saka then. Remember, I haven't actually made that transfer yet, but I'm pretty sure I want to. I could get then Alonso in against Watford, which is a great fixture for Emerson. That In that way, I, I take out having a Spurs player in that fixture. So then I'm, I'm hoping that Mbermo and Tony score at least. But I would then need to fund that. And so that is, I'd need to find 0 0.6 million. So I'd have to downgrade one of Mbermo or Tony. If I was to ingrade, downgrade down, Mbermo, for example, to someone like Gilmore, I would then have to either start Gilmore or I would start Livramento, but then my bench is looking a little bit weak. It would have to just be something like that. So I suppose that's not a huge issue and that is an option, but that would then be a minus four. So I'd, again, I don't mind that at all. I think that could work out for me, but assuming that I make that minus four then, the team then looks like this moving forward. So I would then have to play Livermento once again against Brighton and my bench is still incredibly weak. So having these three rotation risks at the back in James Cancelo and Alonso and a really, really weak bench and then potential injuries, it just starts, I think the bench is a little bit too weak then, especially with the fact that Gilmore and Norman have Tottenham. If Norman's injured, I pretty much pretty much just have Gilmore. So I really do want Alonso. I'm, I'd love to get Alonso in and I don't mind taking a hit to do it. It just leaves the bench a bit weak. So moving forward again, that's fine. But then I get to this stage, I can then use the two free transfers that I would have if I rolled my transfer to then start sorting out the bench again. So it's the same sort of thing. It's just how weak do I want my bench to be? And do I desperately want Alonso in? Am I willing to take a hit to do it? I do really want him in my team. The final option, just before I finish the video, I know I've been rambling on for a bit, is that I do just say, do you know what? I'm taking Son out because what I can do with taking Son out is I can do a lot with that money. So as an example, if I take Son out for Jota, I could then bring in Gundogan for Saka and I'd still have money to play with here. I'd still have around like 1.52 million, I believe. Then I can do anything with this. I can take out Tony for a slightly more expensive striker. I can take out in Burma. I think I'm pretty sure I don't have the budget on here, but I'm pretty sure I could afford something like that. Bernardo Silva. 
in potentially, or I could just keep Mbermo in because like we said, they've got the two decent fixtures coming up and then I could still get Alonso in for Emerson Royale. So if I take Son out and just accept the fact that I should have just gone for Jota a couple of weeks ago rather than Son, I'd still have money in the bank. It'd still only be a minus four, but I could bring in Jota, Gundogan and Alonso. So I suppose it's how much do I want to hang on to Son? Am I desperate to hang on to him? I do really want to hold him for the next two fixtures, but like I said, that sort of thing allows me to focus on the issues of my team and my team looks really good going forward. It does mean that I then don't have Emerson and Son for the Norwich game, but I do have Alonso against West Ham, Jota against Wolves and Gundogan against Watford, which is a great fixture there. Lots of different options, as always, especially with the tight turnaround. I'm happy to hear your opinions on it. Sometimes you guys give me some really creative ideas. As I said, Saka to Jota is the current plan, which leaves my team looking like this with 0 0.1 million in the bank. If you want to just give me other ideas, because I'm not going to make the Jota move tonight, this is what my team looks like with 1.5 million in the bank and two free transfers. So give me your best. Obviously, if Norman is out, that is going to be a slight issue because Gelhart doesn't play. Norman would be injured. So I would literally just have one sub in Livramento. So let me know your opinion on it. Drop your dilemmas below as well. I'm more than happy to try and help you guys because there won't be a game week preview video. I'm going to try and live stream, but I'm not promising anything because the internet is absolutely horrific still. So I'm going to try and live stream. If not, I might do like a one hour Q&A on Twitter. I'll do something to try and answer your questions. Or yeah, maybe like a Q&A or like a written Q&A on the community uh, feature on YouTube because I want to still try and help you guys. But with the tight turnaround, it's going to be very, very difficult. But yeah, drop your dilemmas below. Let me know what you think of my team. I'd love to hear your opinions. So guys, there you have it. That is my team selection video ahead of game week 14. Apologies, it's a little bit rushed, but I just wanted to get it out as soon as possible. Obviously, I don't want to upload it on like Tuesday afternoon because it's only going to be out for an hour or two. So I hope you didn't mind the slightly more knee-jerky reaction. But as always, I've been thinking about these transfers. I really want Jota. I'd also quite like Alonso. I'd quite like Gundogan. But the only way to get those three in is to drop Sun. Outside of that, I do think I need to start to improve my bench. But like I said, I don't think I desperately need to do that this week. I could potentially wait a week or two and then use Son as a make way after the Norwich game to do so. But as always, let me know down below what you think and also drop your dilemmas below. If you are enjoying the content here on this channel, as I said, I think it is way too optimistic, but I am still going to try and push for 10,000 subscribers before the start of 2022. So we We've got around four or five weeks left to get 1,800 subscribers, which is a little bit optimistic. But if you are enjoying the content and you haven't subscribed, please do. If you've got any other friends that watch FPL videos and they don't watch me, then please pass my channel on. I do appreciate it so, so very much. And at the very least, just a like and a comment goes a very, very long way. Feeds the algorithm gods and then they'll push me to more people. And that's more likely to gain me some subscribers. Outside of that, please do download OneFootball. The link is in the description or you can scan the QR code at the start of the video. That helps to support the channel so very much as well. I'll try and do a live stream, but no promises. Outside of that, I'll be doing some sort of Q&A on Twitter or on YouTube community just to answer as many of your questions as possible because I want to help you guys to get the best possible ranks and to win your mini leagues. Until next time, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Don't miss the Tuesday deadline, okay? Make sure that you know it is a midweek deadline. Don't wait until the weekend to make your moves because you would have completely missed game week 14. Until next time, guys, thank you so, so much. Cheers. Bye-bye.